The message is, which gate should I enter? Now, friends, each of our travels on a journey through this life is they present new challenges and choices. Is that we choose which path we will travel, and those choices determine where we arrive at the end of the day. Everyone is on a journey, and there's a destination at the end of that journey. And the choices we make will affect the direction you are headed. Where will you end up depends on the road you take. Some people say there are different paths that lead to God. It really does not matter what you believe or do. As long as you are sincere, well, you can be sincerely wrong. There are many different religions, different beliefs, different ideas, different philosophy, different doctrine. But according to Jesus, there's only two parts. Each one has a start and each one has an end. Which part will you choose? Which gate should I enter? Moses said in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that thou and your seed may live. Joshua said in Joshua 24 verse 15, And it is sin evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose this day who you will serve. What are the gods which your father serve? That we are on the other side of the river or the flood, or the gods of Amorite, in which land you do well. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Jeremiah is saying in Jeremiah 21, verse 8, and unto these people that are said, that said the Lord, you hold fast, I said for you the way of life and the way of death. Elijah said in 1 Kings 8, chapter 18, verse 21, and I came saying unto the people, and said, How long had they between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But he bowed them following him. And the people answered him not a word. According to Jesus, a choice must be made. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, two gates, white and straight, two ways, broad and narrow, two destinations, life and destruction. Two kinds of travelers, few and many. Two kinds of tree, good and corrupt. Two kinds of fruit, good and evil. Two kinds of houses, rock and sand. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, Enter to the narrow gate. For why is the gate? And the broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only if you find it. Now, friends, many people practice religion that will land them in the fires of condemnation. How can one avoid the broad gate that leads to destruction? How can one go through the narrow gate that leads to salvation? Avoiding the broad gate means avoiding practicing sin in the name of under the grace. On the other hand, of abstaining from life in order to earn a place in heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. For in that self dolence nor self-discipline can lead us to the narrow gate of salvation. What can God requires us is repentance and faith. True Christianity is both easy and hard. It is easy because it is a gift. Jesus said in John 3, Verse 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Furthermore, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 to 9, the scripture says, If we say we have not seen, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Watch this, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of our righteousness. Simply believe Jesus and ask him for forgiveness of sins could be easier, you might think. And yet, too, Christianity is hard because it calls for humility and self denial. It is hard to humble ourselves and confess 
I want it for the blood of Jesus. Record that of Judas who prefers suicide to facing his guilt. How many others will say, I will take my chances based on my own good and bad days? And they hope that they might be good. <coughs> Excuse me. They hope that they have done good and evil. And God, therefore, will accept them. And yet the Bible says, there is no righteous, no, not even one. So why do we rebel against the idea of calling out to God for mercy and help? We prefer to be our own God. The reason Satan was put out of heaven is that he was not satisfied to be the greatest of God's angel. He wanted to be free and to rule. Likewise, Adam and Eve succumbed to the set Satan's uh, seduction because they wanted to be like God as well. Forgetting that we are made in the image of God, in the likeness of God, and they were God at the first place. Nidro received God's condemnation because he led the people to try to be the tower to heaven. He wanted to overthrow God. They had the saddest of it all example in the Bible. It is familiar to everyone of us today. When we hear the gospel news and we turn away, it is some of the rich young ruler. Jesus told him to give up his God of money. If he wanted to follow Jesus, the man became sad because he understood the reality of his choice. And he walked away from Jesus, like many of us today walking away from Jesus, because of money. Because you have so much power with the money, you refuse to give that away in order to follow Jesus. He could not give up his own servant today. Christianity is also difficult because it is harder, it is hard to suffer for the name of Jesus. Christians are called to abstain from premature sex, adultery, pornography, even fascinating. The world says we are nihilistic, hypocritical, and repressed. Christians are accused of being hateful and intolerant because we say what Jesus said and the Bible calls sin what it really is. Sin is that that separates you from the living God. Ultimately, the broad gate is religion that berates God by turning God to something is not who forgives our people and demands nothing from his people. Ultimately, the broad gate is a religion that allows pride in our behavior, teaching that our own good works and our own purity grant us reconciliation with God and eternal life. Usually, some religion. Some demands reality to, reality to the organization of the leader rather than direct to God. How much better for us if we enter through the narrow gate, if we practice a humble faith in serving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who forgive our sins and reconcile us with God. Jesus purchased our pardon from our sin and our citizenship in the kingdom of God with his own shed of blood on the Calvary cross. Besides the humble faith, the narrow gate is a holy faith, a life giving over to God's way. And even now Christians opposes us, it is one thing to proclaim a desire to be told. Be praised to God, down to the narrow gate, lies the way to achieve goodness. Our goodness is fine and our godliness is fine, being brought to us by Jesus Christ alone. So which way should I enter? Which gate should I enter? Jesus is the gate to heaven. When he said, and the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to God except by me. So please come to Jesus today, and we remain blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah.